Welcome to an example of an application of a complex fraction. We're asked to find the total resistance of the given parallel circuit. The total resistance of a parallel circuit refers to the opposition to the current flow from the power source. And there are two formulas that we can use to find the total resistance. These two formulas here are equivalent, just in different forms. Looking at this first equation, we have the reciprocal of the total resistance, or one divided by R sub T, is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of each resistance in the system. But we're actually going to use the second formula here, where the right side of the equation is a complex fraction, because we have fractions within a fraction. The total resistance, R sub T, is equal to one divided by the sum of the reciprocals of each individual resistance in the system. So using the second formula, we would have R sub T, the total resistance, equals one divided by one over R sub one, or the reciprocal of R sub one, which would be one fifteenth, plus one over R sub two, or the reciprocal of R sub two, which we can see would be one twentieth. Now to simplify this, we'll first have to add the fractions here in the denominator by obtaining a common denominator. And let's do this on the next slide. The least common denominator is going to be the least common multiple of fifteen and twenty, or the smallest number that's divisible by both fifteen and twenty. One way to find this would be to list multiples of fifteen and list multiples of twenty. Let's go ahead and do this. For multiples of fifteen, fifteen times one is fifteen, fifteen times two is thirty, fifteen times three is forty-five, fifteen times four is sixty, and fifteen times five is seventy-five. For multiples of twenty, twenty times one is twenty, twenty times two is forty, twenty times three is sixty. We can stop here because notice how the smallest number that's common in these two lists is sixty, which would be our least common denominator. So for one fifteenth, if we want a denominator of sixty, we'd have to multiply it by four over four, and for one twentieth, we'd have to multiply it by three over three. So now we'd have one divided by, or the reciprocal of, this would be four sixtieths plus three sixtieths, or seven sixtieths. Again, notice how both denominators are sixty, so we can add the numerators. Four plus three is equal to seven. Well, the reciprocal of seven sixtieths would be sixty sevenths, or if we want, we could also say that R sub T is equal to one divided by seven sixtieths, which is equivalent to one times sixty sevenths. So the total resistance is sixty sevenths ohms. Let's also convert this to a mixed number which means we'd have to divide sixty by seven. Well, sixty divided by seven, there are eight sevens and sixty. Eight times seven is fifty-six. We subtract, we have a remainder of four, which means we can say the total resistance, R sub T, is also equal to eight and four sevenths ohms. In just in case we're asked to convert this to a decimal, and let's say around to two decimal places, or the hundredths, let's go ahead and show that as well. Because we're going to be rounding, we'll have to use the approximation symbol here. Let's go ahead and use the calculator and convert four sevenths to a decimal. So four divided by seven, enter. This would be approximately zero point five seven, which means the total resistance is approximately eight point five seven ohms. So we can express the exact resistance as an improper fraction here, or a mixed number here, or if we're asked to round to the hundredths place value, we could give the answer in this form here. I hope you found this helpful.